Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Jolie and today is January 25th. I come on here every day and I read from a 12 step program. I read books from um, Al-Anon. Al-Anon is a, um, it's a family group that has one purpose and that is to help families and friends of addicts and alcoholics. So um, we'll go ahead and start to read. Today I'm going to be reading from Hope for Today and Courage to Change. And what's wonderful about the readings is that um, they, uh, they give some type of, for me, and it's helping me every day to show up <clears throat> so that I can get um, some type of insight, some hope, some strength, and some courage uh, to, to be able to change my way of thinking in a way that um, is less everyday, less codependent, and um, to be able to deal with um, people who have um, a tendency to have narcissistic behavior when you're dealing with an addict or you have in your in your past like for instance if you um, <clears throat> were raised in a family so that would be you would be a child uh, an adult child of an alcoholic or maybe even today you have a partner uh, one of your children or you have um, some that you work with that um, has, um, has problems like that. So um, we, we see alcoholism as a, um, an addiction as a disease, something that, um, that um, they have to be able to come get over themselves. We're not here to fix anyone, though that's why I, put, I came into the program. I came in because I thought I was gonna be able to help um, give some better insight to my partner at the time. And um, when I came in there asking me how I was doing and they were giving me tools in order to have some happiness, joy and serenity in my life as it is and to have tools going forward. So I'm really grateful for that. And um, I wanna share that with um, whoever this may help. And I'm really grateful that you're here and. If you would love to um, be part of this community, um, I answer all the comments. Um, and also um, there's, a, there's, there's, it's really a nice way to be able to share and um, offer some type of experience, strength and help for the other people. So I encourage you to share, like, and also uh, subscribe so this way you can be alerted to when I upload a video. So just really grateful to be able to do this. So welcome. And um, we'll go ahead and get started. It's January 25th and hope for today. Here we go, let's see what we got. Part of my recovery today from the family disease of alcoholism includes learning to have fun and to play. Hmm. Play? What's that? <laughs> As a child of parents who, who each grew up with alcoholism, I was raised to be industrious and goal-oriented. Today, I'm discovering what play means. My newly adopted dog is helping me every evening. Without fail, she brings me one of her many toys so that we can play. We sit in the middle of the living room floor and play tug, chase, and hide and seek. Years ago, I challenged myself to learn to play once a week. I really didn't have any idea how to do this, but I was willing. I started by discussing the subject with my sponsor. We looked for program tools that could help me put me in the mood for play such as let go and let God and easy does it and turning myself and my problems over to my higher power in step three. I also observed my friends at play. 
Eventually, I found my personal toys of choice and learned to laugh openly and hard. What fun I have today. I may not have played much as a child, but as an adult, I'm making up for those lost moments. I wonder if with this new fury member of, oh, excuse me, with this new furry member of my family, that's the dog, my higher power is saying, I need to play more often than once a week. Now I get the message. My dog expects me to play nightly and this expectation is not negotiable. My dog is an aid to my recovery process. Well, I'll go ahead and share. I don't have a dog, but I, I enjoy dogs and um, my son has a few dogs, and, but I have a cat and my cat, um, she likes, she likes to play a little bit, not too much, but um, I can understand what this is talking about. Like, it's important. Like, I, I can remember playing with, with Barbie dolls when I was little. And, um, but yes, it was important to um, be serious because uh, I never knew it was around the corner with, um, with having alcoholic, um, my alcoholic father. But um, I, I wasn't around him that much. I only saw him on Sundays, but I'm sure some people can relate to that um, growing up um, in an alcoholic home. And um, yeah, it's, I love, um, I love to hear um, some of the things that you have to say about that. And um, there's a lot of people in here that can offer some, some nice, um, ideas for play and getting a dog of course would be a, you know a good step in the right direction as long as you're able to you know have the uh, you know have the responsibility in mind because it is a responsibility to have a dog of course so anyway that was really nice and lighthearted because um there's a rule i think there's what rule 72 or something like that whatever number it is, it's like, are we having fun yet? You know, that's part of life is to have fun. And <clears throat> uh, getting to know what that is for you. So, yeah. so thought for today, and don't take yourself so seriously because life's too short to be so serious. So thought for the day, <laughs> that's my thought for the day. Having fun is part of my recovery, one day at a time. This is a good message for me. Thank you. And um, a quote from a book, an Al-Anon book, from Survival to Recovery, quote, with a decreased sense of always having to do something useful to justify my existence, I now allow recreation, enthusiasm, and delight into my life. So that's, so I have to show you guys something. Maybe you've seen it before, but I have this little dog here. This is my little dog. And so he, Wolfie, he adds some joy to my life. And I'll just be silly here for a second because it's kind of ironic. And I, I was thinking about this today. I was like, don't take yourself so seriously. And I have a little bunny that I love. So she's gonna tell us not to be so serious. <laughs> Hello. Hugo, Hugo. Hello. Yeah, I used to do these a lot, um, puppets a lot with my kids. And um, I just, what do you wanna tell me? Don't take myself so seriously. Aw. <laughs> he is. Okay, say bye bye. Go sit down, okay? <laughs> so cute. All right, go back over here. So sometimes you need a teddy, little teddy bears and little bunnies, little puppets to make you happy, animate your life, you know. So, all right, don't take yourself so seriously, Jolene. Okay, so I'm going to read from Courage to Change now. 
I hope that was a little entertaining and sweet. Look how cute they are over there. What are you doing? Okay. I didn't know I was going to read that. So we read together here because I'm not reading these beforehand. I just want to like off the cuff to see how it goes because it's important for me to have fun, to be able to um, have some type of spontaneous activity for the day. So this helps me a lot. I hope it's helping you. Okay, so January 25th, courage to change. Here we go. Page 25. Before I discovered Al-Anon, I often used other people's problems as an excuse to avoid my obligations. I loved the drama of another's crisis and talked about it at every opportunity. My own life seemed increasingly trivial and my problems felt silly. It was therefore very difficult for me to focus on myself when I came to Al-Anon. I wanted to talk about the alcoholic when I came to meetings, but no one seemed interested. They all kept asking me how I felt and what I did and what I wanted. I found that I was overly interested in others because I had such a low opinion of myself. My sponsor helped me to see that when I acted as if someone else's life was more important than mine, I was harming myself. This had to stop if I wanted to learn to value my own experience. Focusing on myself was the beginning of building self-esteem. It took practice, but with the support I got in meetings, I grew more comfortable. I learned to talk about myself and to view my feelings, achievements, and concerns as valid and important. So, right? Um, so off with the, um, the doormat mentality. And uh, I didn't realize I had that happening until, um, until I realized I did. Why was I attracting certain people in my life that, um, that didn't value um, my love, you know, but um, also because I, um, I may not be, uh, I wasn't really valuing my own love and um, through therapy and through coming also to, you know, mostly with the, with the Allen and groups is to really realize that it's like, um, you know, the most important commitment um, are the commitments we make to ourselves. And that commitment is to start from the heart and understand who you are and value that. And how can we really truly value and love someone else if we don't truly value and love ourselves? Like the, the level, the playing level will always match that as within. So is out, you know, that whole thing, like, even though you like, no, no, like there's like the ultra focus on others. And yes, we can love others and then discard ourselves. And then what's left, what's left to love of you, right? So, um, you know, all relationships uh, require honesty every day and that honesty and relationship to yourself. Like, honestly, are you taking care of yourself? Are you doing things that you love? Do you know what you love to do? Are you happy? Are you doing things that are uh, in order to get um, some type of uh, pat on the back? You know, do them because you actually love doing them and because they're authentically who you are in a confident way. And that takes time, especially if you've lived in this particular situation with um, not knowing and feeling desperate. And um, so I can just attest that um, by working this program and sharing and getting a sponsor, talking and over journaling, <clears throat> do something every day that you love to do. And if you don't know what that is, just 
remember the last time you did something you love to do that brought you joy or that you did a, had a belly laugh, some type of, to just work with that memory, meditate um, to, um, to get to that point. Um, and I'm telling uh, myself this because, uh, so I don't forget because we can easily forget if we, if we slide off and we don't do our, our work and, you know, reading, following along and um, journaling and <clears throat> praying, praying to God for God's will and God, uh, as you understand him, for the great outdoors, taking a walk in nature, quieting your mind so you can listen Listen, and these are times that we take for ourselves. So I'll go ahead and end with our serenity prayer. And I want to thank you. And um, I really appreciate this. Um, I really appreciate your comments. And, um, you know, um, if we have an openness it takes, um, like I said, everything takes time, but um, and just a willingness to try. Um, we can um, learn to um, detach from the attitudes that um, that no longer serve us. So, all right, with that, I'll go ahead and do this serenity prayer. Nice deep breath in and out. In, out. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and wisdom to know the difference. God's will be done. Amen. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. Thank you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.